welcome everyone to today's uh, lovely session that we are having today uh, on the india and israel infrastructure summit we are proud today to be part of this event the indian chamber of international business has been coordinating across 38 countries to enhance bilateral and business ties across the globe it's uh, our opportunity that we, we have been given for this uh, event today is uh, definitely an honor for us and we are proud to have uh, the ministry of economy and industry of israel supporting the event uh, the consul general uh, consulate general of israel in mumbai uh, that is also supporting the event our event partners the kanu doshi group uh, oren israel and antia uh, from israel too uh, we also thank our partners the global india business forum and all the attendees here it's great to have all of you all here today for this afternoon i would like to now uh, share with you some information about 30 seconds on the indian chamber of international business uh, followed by the national anthem of both the countries and then we would be moving on to our agenda for the day Welcome all of you all once again uh, I would now like to hand over uh, the dais to Mitesh Kala ji uh, is the partner for the Kanu Doshi group Welcome Mitesh ji I would request you to please uh, further on the agenda along with the introduction of all the speakers welcome Thank you uh, thank you Mantri to kick off uh, this great uh, event uh, let me just first share my screen yes uh, i hope the screen is visible yes so uh, thank you manpreet uh, for giving us an opportunity uh, i will first namaste and shalom to all the guests 
the consulate uh, dignitaries and the fellow speakers for this uh, event i want to welcome you all it is my immense pleasure to welcome uh, you all to this india israel infrastructure summit uh, powered by kanadoshi group and our antia network partners oren israel my name is mitesh gala and i lead uh, transaction advisory services uh, and valuation services at uh, kanadoshi group uh, india and israel have been natural bilateral partners for last many many years and these are across uh, aspects and areas like economy uh, military strategic and cultural uh, be it uh, agricultural technologies like uh, drip irrigation or advanced military india being the largest uh, buyer of uh, military technologies from israel uh, india has welcomed israel with open arms now uh, with this uh, summit we are trying to explore opportunities for indian businesses in israel especially the infrastructure companies uh, this is a joint effort put together by oren israel they are one of the top consultants in israel uh, and uh, kanudoshi group uh, let me give you a brief about uh, kanudoshi group so we started about four decades back in 1979 uh, we are a full service accounting assurance advisory and tax regulatory consulting firm uh, headquartered in mumbai and having our own office in pune and singapore uh, along with our affiliates we have presence in gurgaon delhi chandigarh hyderabad chennai and ahmedabad uh, we believe in providing be bespoke services to our customers and clients which are more relationship driven and our existing clients are then uh, supported by our able team uh, which has a deep knowledge base and expertise in various domain uh, the areas in which we provide services are range from accounting and assurance uh, tax compliances cross border taxations and structuring same compliances due diligence and revisions mergers and acquisitions and fundraising and various other advisory and consulting services our reach is truly global uh, along with our offices in india and uh, being part of entia network which gives us access to geographies in europe africa latin america china asia specific and particular uh, entirely uh, basically the entire globe uh, kdg is led by mr uh, jayesh parmar uh, and and we have an able, able leadership team which are domain experts so uh, we have rt uh, we have rushab uh, darshan who will be speaking today uh, kunal ankit and myself both of us lead the the advisory services our clients are spread across Uh, various domain sectors like automotive defense infrastructure specialized manufacturing homeware cookware or fmcg building materials it its tech startups uh, and uh, chemicals textiles and various other manufacturing and other service related industries we try to put together this presentation so that it can support indian businesses Uh, to look at avenues abroad as well uh, we are going to have a detailed discussion on opportunities in israel the broad agenda we will we are privileged to have mr sagi acher uh, he is economic and trade council general consulate of israel to mumbai he will be talking about their role and how they will support trade between india and israel this will be followed by mr amin Kah amir kahani he is uh, he is consultant at or in israel and expert in infrastructure domain he will talk about opportunities and business development in israel followed by ofer the chairman at uh, or in israel he would be 
talking about practical case studies and experiences of businesses in infrastructure projects uh, who are who have entered israel this will be followed by my fellow partner darshan shah uh, to talk about what are the aspects that indian businesses will have to keep in mind while they carry out these projects in israel and the structures they could explore this would be followed by a q and a and then we have a very valuable input by hova ref is a senior director business development from ministry of economy and industries israel uh, and he will be talking about opportunities from government sides in infrastructure domain uh, i would i hope this would be a very valuable experience to all the esteemed guests of the present here i would now invite mr sagi hr to have his opening remark and talk about the role of general consulate in trade between india and israel uh, mr sagi i welcome you all, you to the dais and share your thoughts on this topic thank you yeah mr sagi you can continue you you are on mute uh, uh manpreet he cannot unmute in can you check okay thank you can you hear me now yes we can hear you okay so first of all shalom namaste namaste ji Thank you very much Nitish thank you very much for having me here today on this great event I really really welcome the opportunity I will talk very briefly about us what we do so as was mentioned here before my name is Mr Sagi Icher I am the head of the economic and trade mission of Israel to Mumbai India um part of the Israeli government the ministry of economy and industry Mr Hova Ref that will be speaking shortly is also part of the same ministry different union though what are we doing and what we can offer you and when i say you i mean as of mainly indian businesses and entrepreneurs and indian investors we're a part of a government entity which is overseeing israel's bilateral trade allowing israeli businesses to export all around the globe we have 45 different missions these days southeast asia both americas europe africa china you name it Three of them actually is based here in India. One of them is the one I'm heading in Mumbai. Two others, one is down south in Bangalore, and the third is a part of our embassy in New Delhi. All those missions, us included, are allowing Israeli businesses to export, helping them with the export processes, finding them partners in the local market, distributors, importers, agents, helping them with governmental issues, government relations, taxes, etc. and going specifically to this case and the agenda of this event we are also helping israeli businesses attract investors and investments from abroad so any kind of investment you want to look into you want to seek an opportunity with an israeli company with an israeli startup you want to partner up with an israeli vc with a corporate vc with a family office in israel all of those things will be much more than happy to facilitate for you to help you find the right partners to the scouting for you okay so when you approach the israeli business it will be through us and we will facilitate everything for both sides and make sure both sides um are gaining a lot of this this interaction and of this communication to make it a win win deal for the indian investor and the israeli company business startup just getting the investment um israel is very well known as a very good market for attracting investors and investments from all around the world we got any big company that you can think of many from the US so you got google you got intel you got um facebook and you name it apple deutsche bank uh bmw you name it the huge companies the giants all of them are working in israel these days and when i say working i mean invested in an israeli company some cases just capital investment most of them is strategic investors putting in their money to allow their businesses to grow within israel we're seeing more and more interest coming from uh, asian countries mainly from china japan as well we i am encouraging all of you 
to consider, deeply consider Israel as an investment destination. We're not seeing these days, we're seeing an increase in the bottle of trade between Israel and India, not enough investments are coming in. So any kind of an Indian investment willing and wanting to come and invest in Israel, myself and my team based here in Mumbai will do the most as we can and the best of our efforts to allow you to invest in an Israeli business or an Israeli company. And if I may, one last quick note, on the 24th and 25th of November, a month from today, we will be conducting the Israeli, the Tel Aviv, TLV construction and prop tech, going to be held uh, all virtual, all online, okay? All virtual event going to be held in, uh, for you guys to join. So I'm just putting on the details right now on the chat box so everybody can use it. Also adding to this link to the event, the email of my staff members, Ms. Perlini, that will be leading this event on our end, which will be the POC. This event is all about Israeli tech and Israeli innovation, innovative companies, allowing businesses, allowing infrastructure company, road construction, building construction, infrastructure, if it's the energy sector, ports, airports, seaports, uh, electricity companies, communication facilities, everything which is about anything to do with infrastructure, the Israeli company, top-notch best companies you can find today worldwide, and I'm saying it with being modest, but they're really, really great companies, bringing top, cutting edge, really the best technology you can think of, all innovative, all cutting edge technologies for you, for your corporates, for your businesses. So the next time you will expand a building or you will get one of your facilities on board, you can implement Israeli tech in it in terms of cost effectiveness, saving of energy, more, more environmental friendly, uh, getting a lot of out of your ROI. You put a lot of money into infrastructure. It's a huge investment. You want to make the best out of it as a business. You want the biggest ROI you can get. Israeli companies will allow you to succeed to this purpose. So that was it from my end. Again, thank you very much for this opportunity. I really, really enjoy talking to you and meeting all you great people. Again, as I was saying, you got the link on the, on the chat box. I also sent it to Mr. Manpreet earlier, so you can share it, you can share it with you later on. You got an email of Ms. Perlini. And you have my details online as well. So please reach out to us. One last note, all services provided by us are 100% free. We give 100% discount to all our clients. We don't take money, not from Israelis, not from Indians, nothing. No royalties, no commissions, no equity, not today, not in the future. We only ask for two things in return. One is some of your time and two is a smile. So that's the way you pay us, with some of your time and a smile. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sagi. I think that is what all, uh, all of the corporates and the guests attending here would have ever wished uh, a completely free advice directly coming from the government of Israel and their representatives. And uh, what you said is true. The technologies of Israel are proven uh, even and something that we really own so something like the drip irrigation which we uh, is a household in not a name now and we feel it's very own but it's it started off in israel and that's how uh, uh the best of the cutting edge technologies is available for indian businesses and a great investment destination i'm sure most of them uh, will look forward to visiting them and we'll we make sure that at least we help uh, we help this spread to our clients as well. Taking, moving on from here uh, and giving you exactly what Mr. Sagi said, what are the things that we can do in Israel? Mr. Amin Kani is a consultant, a senior consultant at uh, or in Israel. I welcome him to kick off this event and share the details uh, about opportunities for Indian infrastructure companies in Israel. Uh, Mr. Amin, I welcome you. Uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to be here and to share with you my uh, activity, uh, our activity in Israel, in order to explore the way that uh, we are working together with our partners all over the world. But with your permission, I would like to start with a story. 
1982, I just finished my army and my first trip outside Israel was to the gate of India. Since 1982, I have a warm place to the India people and to India as a whole. And therefore it's a huge experience for me and it's, I'm very excited to be here and to share with you about our activity and how we can support your, your Indian company to make fruitful business, a long-term business and a fruitful one. Uh, my, name, my name is Amir, Amir Kahani, and maybe part of you know that Kahani in Hindu is a story. So I will share with you my story about how we can do business in Israel. Uh, I am the uh, manager and the partner of Foreign Consulting Israel, a part of Foreign International, a leading consulting firm that's spread all over the world. Foreign has a, a company named Antia, that it is a lines of independent firm, especially in the accounting and taxation. We are working together very tight. That's why we had the opportunity to work uh, with, uh, uh, with you in this event. Oren Israel has a couple of uh, three division. Uh, one is the consulting firm that I am the manager. The second is finance that responds to uh, the finance aspects of a company, risk management, due diligence, CFO, outsourcing CFO, loans, investment, and so on and so. Oren Israel is bringing a full solution from the consulting, starting from strategy, innovation, sales and marketing, and so on. And the last department is taxation and accounting. Uh, Ophir Angel is the chairman of Oren Israel, and he will speak after I will finish my part. So what is, what is our option to create a fruitful business relationship and to develop our activity in the Israeli market. That's what I will focus in my presentation. Why we are taking this seminar? The latest research that was done by Tel Aviv University show that most of the infrastructure projects and the large infrastructure, infrastructures project are done by foreign companies. This can be added to the OECD economic survey that was taken two years ago that explain or give, or give more understanding about the reason why so many international infrastructure company try to enter into the Israeli market. From one hand, due to political and economical situation, in the last decade, the Israeli government did not invest in large and significant infrastructure project. That's lead us to a situation where actually there is a huge gap between what we have currently and what Israel needed in the nearest future. In this vacuum, in this gap, international company, especially in the infrastructure company, entered into the Israeli market. So there is a plenty of room for company outside Israel to enter and make a couple of activity in the Israeli market. So given this, how can I identify what is the right project for my company? First of all, I was very impressed by the companies that are participant here. And uh, I think that you have an excellent uh, possibilities to make business in the Israeli market. Basically, we have two types of project. The first one is a public led by the government that is specialized or focus on a huge, huge multi-million dollar project. For example, road transportation, water construction, energy, and much more. The second one is the private sector 
where most, and I highlight the word most, not all of them, but most of them are connected to the building in, uh, infrastructure and all the, that is connected to the building infrastructure. So basically those are the two major type of project and you as the one that want to enter to Israeli market and as in a strategic decision, you need to consider what is the best way to penetrate to the Israeli market. We will be able to assist you in such a strategic decision, but in the end of the day, based on your business strategy, you need to decide if you either enter to the public sector or to the private sector. First of all, let's focus on the infrastructure that led by the government. The rules are the same like in India. In India, you have most of the big tenders that are led by the company needs a tender. And most of them has a, a process that one very important topic is the reference that the government to be able to give you this tender or to allow you to participate in this tender, most of the Indian company seeking for an international company or a, to cooperate with the company that has the right reference. Then you have the regular process of a tender and we are very similar between India and Israel. Basically, we are very similar in the same process. Here in Israel, we have the tenders law. This is a must. Most of the parts are must and you cannot jump over this process. What you can do is instead of taking the leads of the project to be in the front of the project, you can cooperate or you can be part of a, of a company that will lead the project. But nevertheless, you need to know the process of the tenders. So the first step is the RFI, request for information. Not all the tenders ask this, but mainly and partly of the tenders, especially in something that is unique, the government asks for RFI. It is not obliged to fulfill it. You can go directly to the RFP, to the request for proposal. But the advantage is that we are able to enter our advantage in this RFI. After collecting the RFIs from the market, then the government published an RFP, request for proposal. The request for proposal is a, a, a section that divided into two subsections. The, the first is the technical reply. It is entered into a separate envelope. And in the second envelope, you have to enter your financial proposal, meaning two envelope and the process is as follow. First, a committee that is organized by the department that are asking for this tender, open up the first envelope, the envelope with all the technical documents, with all the demonstration about how you will take part or what you will do in this tender. How do you fulfill the tender's needs? The committee then gather and give a remark. Each, uni each person in this committee give its own remarks. And in the end, it's be collected, calculate. And this uh, uh, offer get a score. If you pass the minimum score, then you have asked to be, to take and to make a presentation, to present your ability, to present your know-how, to present how you will fulfill the tender's needs and how in the end you will have a, a closed a proposal. This is done with all the participants of the tenders. Now, 
the committee given a minimum number that you have to pass. The company or the, the uh, proposal that pass this minimum, minimum score, only then the committee under a lawyer observation open up the second envelope with your price quotation. And then the committee give another score that is the combination about the technical aspect and the pricing aspect. And only then they start negotiating with the, with the one that they want, they had the best score. So bear it in mind because it is very critical. But here in Israel, we have in the government law, in the government tender, 70% of the final score is on the pricing issue. And only 30% of the final score is under your technical solution. That's why you need to know and you need a guidance here in Israel in order to be able to fulfill and to give the right answers with the right price quotation. I would like to pass to another type of project, the PPP projects. Now the PPP, private public, uh, it's a huge option, a huge opportunity here in Israel. And you can see here a couple of uh, activities that are made under the PPT uh, project. A huge transfer of the IDF units. It's one of the biggest uh, infrastructure project in Israel, one of the biggest, not the biggest one, but one of them. Uh, Metropolitan uh, uh, Road 6, that is, is the cross Israel uh, highway and more. And uh, uh, Mr. Chovav Raf will give more details about those type of uh, uh, option that you can get. I would like to highlight our estimation for the for PPP project in the next five years. Around seventy billion US dollar for the next five years. So, when I share with you all this, you can understand that you need someone that will escort you here in Israeli market in order that you can win a project to have a tender, to fill in the tender with all the needed documents and chart to calculate everything based on the Israeli terms. I believe that you cannot do it by yourself. You need someone that will guide you, that will take you in this process. Here in Oren, Israel, we bring an in-depth tender know-how. I have personally, I have more than 30 years of business activity in Israeli, most of, most of them was involved by tenders. I have a lot of connection in Israel, or in Israel as a whole, we have a vast knowledge and connection with the decision maker in different authorities. That's the added value that we can bring to your benefit. Let's move on to the private project. It is easier to describe it because uh, the private is different from the government. You do not need a tender. It's shorter, it's faster. The quality and on time get much more tension and the score is higher on this. But on the other hand, it's a smaller project. It is not like the multi-million dollar project of the, led by the government. So you need to take it into consideration. And again, here in Israel, if you fly when you, we will be able to visit Israel and you start landing, you can see all those places, unbelievable numbers of places that we are building a, a new uh, towers and new houses and new uh, uh, places. So what we can offer is to give you a professional selling support that start by a, a penetrate to Israeli market, strategic thinking, sales and marketing, positioning, and mainly, mainly, mainly connected you to the perfect partner that will be able to cooperate with you. 
Now, if in one hand, we have multi-million dollar project, but in the other hand, companies from outside, international companies enter, there is a question, why? Why there is such a gap and why we are doing this type of presentation? The main reason is that Israel lack of professional manpower. Israel, as you may know, and, and it's been said before, Israel is a high-tech nation. We are deeply involved in software, hardware, medical devices, uh, the, uh, the top or uh, the, the state of the art technology. But unfortunately, civil engineers, we are lacking of civil engineers. This is for one hand. We do not have enough uh, know-how and we do not expose to our new technology like tunnel digging. We have a uh, lack of skills companies that can face such a huge project. And we have emergency in building and closing the gap between the situation that we face today and what we are needed. So if I may conclude, I can see a huge potential for you, for the Indian company that want to start and to build a fruitful long-term business relationship with the Israeli market. We at Oren are obligated to support you all over the way from day zero until you will get the project. We will do it step by step with a well-defined, well-improved systematic process that will bring you with a minimum cost, minimum risk to win a huge project. It was my pleasure to share with you my experience. And again, I really hope that we will be able to meet in Israel or in India. And I assure you, the first place that I will visit in India is the gate of Mumbai. So thank you very much. And I, sh and I would like to thank you and I return back. Mitash, you are in mute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amir. Uh, I think it gave us a great insight on how government projects work, uh, which is quite similar to how it does in India. Uh, now I invite Ofer uh, to talk about the case studies uh, that are uh, that are they have recently experienced. That will give a deeper insight of projects in uh, uh, in Israel. So Ofer, uh, uh, it's a, uh, the floor is open to you. Thank you, Mitesh, and, and thank you all for hosting us and uh, attending this uh, interesting event. Um, first of all, I would like uh, I will uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ophir Angel. I'm, I'm the chairman of Auren Israel, and as Amir mentioned, Auren is providing a full package of services assisting foreign companies coming to Israel, starting from penetrating the market, and doing the project and ending with uh, taking the profit uh, back home, in this case, back to India. Um, our experience is in the field of uh, infrastructure projects and in uh, introducing and accompanying companies from foreign companies coming to Israel is with experience of more than 30 years. Uh, mainly, we are representing foreign companies coming to Israel from Asia from Europe and from the US. Currently today, we are representing uh, more than 25, 26 companies, big companies that are doing huge projects in Israel and included uh, dozens of subcontractors, foreign subcontractors that are coming to Israel to do projects. And even in the last months, we received uh, three new companies in the period of the COVID, they succeed uh, although there is no a lot of flights, but uh, opening new projects. So just giving you the hint that you don't need to wait until the pandemic situation will pass. You can start already uh, entering project and entering the market. And we are doing that quite efficiently today with the technology and the personal connection and us as representatives here in Israel. So it's doable. Let me just give you three examples of uh, projects so you get a notion of uh, what is being done. Uh, three examples of, of recent projects that 
some of them uh, just finished or are still ongoing. So the first project, let's see. Yes, the first pro project is the uh, glass uh, company that is doing glazing to a buildings, uh, meaning that they are taking a real estate building and putting the cover of, of uh, glass to the building and doing other glass project in, in uh, real estate. They approached us uh, about uh, two years ago, asked us to assist them to penetrate the market. This is a small private company coming from Europe. And their attention is to go into the Israeli market, not for government tenders, but for the private sectors to connect, to be connected with uh, uh, real estate entrepreneurs here in Israel. So we assist them by locating the right uh, uh, project. It's a private project, uh, assisting them in the negotiation and up until signing the agreement. Following that, we assist them during the project, uh, for example, assisting with the visa for the employees, uh, work permits, uh, import of goods and, and, and products that they needed to, to bring to Israel. Up until the end of the project that uh, was finished after a year and a half, and successfully they uh, shifted the profit back uh, to their homeland. And because it was a very successful in their part from the profit point of view and the project point of view, and also now the Israeli market is well aware of their existence, now they are starting to handle new project in Israel independently. So it's a good example for a private company looking for medium or small size project. Uh, when I'm saying medium size and small size project, we are talking about project of half a million dollar to five million dollar. This is supposed to be small projects. And they are currently starting their second project and third project here in Israel. This is the first example. The second example is um, a luggage uh, storing line that an European company approached us, they already knew in advance which government tender they want to, to uh, participate. Uh, it's quite easy to find them in the, in the internet, as uh, Hovab uh, will explain following uh, my, my uh, explanation or two speakers ahead. Uh, they knew in advance what they want to, to achieve. We assist them, as Amir mentioned, writing the, the tender documentation, assisting them in winning the tender. Luckily for them and also happily for us, they won the tender and started uh, uh, doing the project in uh, Ben Gurion Airport. Following that, they received also a second part of the project and implemented their services in the second uh, Rimon Airport, uh, International Airport in Israel. So all together, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, two steps of a project, uh, around about 5.5 million euros. Uh, quite a lot of challenges during the project. Part of that was reporting to uh, the airport's authorities and uh, examine all the equipment because it was also connected to security uh, issues. And now they start uh, uh, the warranty period of seven years to their product. So we are assisting them uh, co completing the project and starting the warranty uh, period. The last uh, example uh, I think that most interested is the air purification uh, project. It's a big uh, government tender from the Israeli electricity company. And the uniqueness of this project that we assisted the company to win the project. Um, and we are talking about a huge project, one of the biggest one, 100 million euros. But pay attention, this is, this is a unique project because inside this project, there is more, there is more than 50 subcontractors. Half of them or more than half of them are foreign subcontractors, meaning Asian, European and US companies that are given subcontracting services to the big project. Um, out of the 50, we are representing in Israel 12, and this project is, is more than seven years, probably it will be a little bit longer, and we are facing the, let's say, the end of the project in, in the coming year. So the interesting thing is not only big companies can win tenders in Israel, 
also subcontractors, and we are talking about sub sub projects of half a million to fifty million dollars. Uh, in the slide mentioned euros, um, so it's a good opportunities uh, in all kind of uh, subcontracting uh, abilities that you might have in India uh, to implement them here in Israel. So basically just giving you three examples of the opportunities i'll be happy to give you any answer or to uh, even after uh, this presentation in the q a or in uh, direct correspondent if you want to contact with me you will have all the details in in the slide later on thank you very much and midash i'm transferring back to you uh thanks uh Ofer. uh i think the last project which is shared was very, very interesting. Uh, one, the scale of the project and how dynamic uh, the project was with more than 50 subcontractors across the globe. As I said, more than 50% uh, would be foreign. So a lot of coordination, but also a lot of opportunities for mid-size and small uh, and slightly larger businesses in India. And what India can offer is definitely uh, good manpower, uh, good engineering skills. Uh, technology in bits and pieces, definitely yes. Water purification as a subject is also, there are some few good corporates who are quite world leaders. And obviously our other companies will learn from these projects as they start entering into these markets. Now we come back uh, to the main question for Indian companies. How do we go to Israel? And how do we set up in Israel? How do we bring back the profits? What, uh, are, uh, what Indian laws allow? What Israeli laws allow? And a bit uh, about uh, our, the finances. So I welcome my partner, uh, Darshan, uh, who will give a brief overview about how uh, doing business uh, can be done by Indian companies and uh, what are the ways they can explore it. So Darshan, uh, the floor is open to you uh, to run through uh, your part of the presentation. Darshan, you are on mute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Is screen visible? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's visible. Yeah. Just a second. Good evening, everyone. My name is Darshan Shah. I am a partner in Kanun Doshi Group. First of all, I would like to thank ICIB for providing the platform to demonstrate and discuss the opportunities available in the infrastructure sector. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to participate in this event. The sole reason of taking up this specific topic through this webinar is to highlight the totally unexplored opportunities available in the, in the infrastructure field. Accordingly, I would like to thank our expert from Oren Israel, that is Mr. Amir Kahani, of your angel, for thanking their uh, for sharing their experience in handling infrastructure projects and mainly highlighting the potential opportunities for Indian infrastructure players. I am going to cover key tax and regulatory considerations for doing infrastructure projects in Israel. So any business transaction structuring is incomplete without tax structuring. And it becomes more important and critical when there is a cross-border investment as it generally involves tax implications from two countries. Therefore, tax cannot be an afterthought in case of a cross-border investment or project. Instead, it becomes a key decision-making factor in case of offshore projects. Therefore, important to understand tax structure in both the countries. Therefore, we will first, we are, we are first going to cover tax implication in Israel. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So for understanding the tax implication in Israel, it is important to know the possible types of business entities in Israel for carrying infrastructure projects. In Israel, similar to India, there are various types of entity presence possible in Israel. However, practically two options are available in for infrastructure projects. That is a subsidiary company, or you can say a limited liability company in Israel. And second option is a branch office. Again, subsidiary companies and separate legal entity in Israel, whereas branch office is not a separate legal entity. 
uh, it is nothing but an extension of Indian entity. So the next question is how to select the type of MTT in Israel. There are various factors for selecting a type of presence in Israel. Most common and important of the project. For short term project, it may be advisable to open a branch office or a long uh, for a long term, maybe a subsidiary company or limited liability company. Also it depends upon the objective of the Indian company as well. If underlying objective is to carry out the uh, single project, then maybe it is advisable to uh, carry out the project through branch office, even though the project duration is for a longer duration. So the most important factor is now tax. So let's understand what is the tax implication under Israel domestic tax law. So both profit of the company and branch office is taxable as 20%, 23% in Israel. Unlike India, there is no difference in tax rate between the two. However, the separate tax will be levied in case of a company where profits are further distributed among the shareholder. So basically when Israel company is going to distribute the dividend to Indian company in that situation, then there will be a separate tax will be levied. However, this tax will be subject to India-Israel tax treaty. So if any beneficial rate is available in India-Israel treaty, that will be available. So that is from the Israel tax plan point. So this is not the end of the story. As I mentioned earlier, that you know uh, the same income could be taxable in India. So there could be an implication in India as well. So there will be a tax implication in India in case where the Israel company distributes dividend to Indian parent company. Such dividend income will also be taxable in India. However, tax credit will be available in India for the taxes paid in Israel. Nevertheless, there will be no tax implication in India if the company in Israel does not distribute the dividend. However, where in case of a branch, income, income of the branch will by default get tax in India in the hands of Indian company, irrespective of whether profits are repatriated back to India or not. Therefore, important to select the entities based on the long term and short term cash flow requirement. This means if the ultimate plan is to reinvest the income in Israel from the project, then company structure is more beneficial as there will not be any taxes in India. Whereas the objective is to get the income repatriated to back repatriated back to India on completion of project, maybe branch office setup will be a more beneficial option. However, there are other factors which you have to evaluate it in detail before you know, selecting any uh, presence, sanctity presence uh, uh, in Israel. So now apart from tax, there are other regulatory requirements from the Indian regulatory law, which is we, which we call Foreign Exchange Management Act, which is called the FEMA in India. So as per FEMA regulation, overseas investment in company or subsidiaries are allowed under either automatic route or either approval route. However, general permission is available to incorporate a company and a branch outside India with certain exception. With regard specific to the infrastructure projects, there is no specific provision provided under the FEMA. Hence, it falls under the automatic route. Although no approval is required, as I mentioned earlier, for overseas investment, but the, all the investment has to be routed through authorized dealer bank. An ODI form is required to be filed with ADD banker for any for overseas investment. Further, there are certain limits and threshold which is prescribed under the FEMA regulation. The total financial commitment of Indian entity cannot exceed 400% of its net worth. Further, there is one more additional condition that any financial commitment over and above 1, uh, 1 billion USD will have to require a prior, prior approval of the RBI. So please note that even that your net worth limit is not utilized up to 400%, but your investment is a 1 billion, more than 1 billion dollar. Although it is under automatic route, you need to have a RBI approval for uh, for carrying, uh, for opening a uh, overseas company outside India. Now, this was with respect to the overseas entity, which is basically a subsidiary company. Now, with respect to branch office, it's very interesting to know that there is no specific regulations uh, provided under the FEMA. So like we have a separate specific regulations and even the FAQ provided by the FEMA and RBI for op uh, uh, opening a WS or your only one subsidiary outside India, there is no specific regulation uh, for the opening a branch office in India. However, there are certain conditions which are mentioned, but again, there is no restrictions to carry out any operations to branch office. There are no approval which is required under that for you know, opening a branch office. The most important thing is that Indian company has to open a bank account in the foreign jurisdiction, which is Israel in our case. There are certain ceilings which are prescribed under the RBI. So for initial investment, you can remit up to this much amount and for any subsequent remittances, you can incur this much amount of expenses. So that has to be taken care of. Also, any bank account opened abroad has to be reported with the ID banker in India. So although again, similar to the WS structure, company structure, there are no approval required, but there are certain reporting 
or compliance requirement which has to be done with the RBI or AD banker in India. To sum up, if I really say so, the Indian party does not have any specific restriction or does not require any prior approval of RBI for carrying out infrastructure projects through branch or a company. There are only certain compliance needs to be carried out with AD banker in this regard. Nevertheless, the selection of Indian entity shall be carried out based on the various factors, including tax as discussed earlier. I guess I have covered the key aspect to be considered from the tax and regulatory standpoint. If you have any questions in this regard, you can definitely ask in the Q&A section or we can take it offline also. We will be sharing our coordinates thereafter. So now it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Huawei Ref, who is a senior director in the Ministry of Economy in Israel. He will be providing the brief overview of the activity in the infrastructure field in Israel. I will request Mr. ORF to take over the dais and floor is yours, Mr. ORF. Thank you, Doshan. Uh, let me just yeah, share my presentation. Oops, just a second. Um, just a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, for the introduction and uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here today and uh, talk to you all about the uh, different opportunities that you have in the government uh, infrastructure project sector uh, in Israel. Uh, so my name is Chobav Ref. I'm the uh, Senior Director for Business Development and the uh, Foreign Investments and Industrial Cooperation Authority under the Ministry of Economy and Industry in Israel. Uh, so basically, the uh, the Foreign Investment and Industrial Cooperation Authority is comprised of uh, two units, which actually uh, both may be uh, relevant to your activities. Uh, the first one uh, is Invest in Israel. Invest in Israel is like Invest in India, uh, like any other uh, foreign investor uh, promotion agency. Uh, we are basically promoting, supporting, assisting uh, foreign investors when they come uh, to do business in Israel. And uh, I like to say that we are basically uh, the account manager of the uh, foreign company when it comes to dealing with uh, different uh, government uh, entities uh, in Israel. Uh, so this is uh, one activity. The other activity uh, in the unit that we have, and uh, I will focus more on that uh, in my presentation today, is the Industrial Cooperation Authority. Um, basically, Industrial Cooperation means that, uh, and I will go into just a little bit more details later on, is that uh, every foreign uh, company that wins public tenders in Israel at a certain amount uh, needs to do what we call the buyback offset industrial cooperation. There are uh, new names, different names for that, uh, at a certain amount and certain percentage of the uh, uh, contract value. Uh, and I'll go into more details later uh, and uh, talk about how you can not just see this as an obligation, but basically as an opportunity. Um, so let's start talking about the different projects. Okay, so the government of Israel uh, published what we call the National Infrastructure Plan uh, for the year's uh, uh, four-year plan, 2020-2024. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna go into details about uh, all the different projects that are there. Uh, you can, I put the link here uh, that you can uh, go into and get uh, specific details of the uh, all of those uh, infrastructure projects uh, that uh, we have there. Uh, and uh, you can see for yourself and uh, look at uh, more details uh, of each of the projects. All this program is uh, coordinated by our Prime Minister's office and it is important uh, to say and to mention that uh, all the projects that uh, uh, I'll talk about and that are uh, in that uh, uh, internet uh, website link, uh, they are not under the responsibility of the Ministry of uh, Economy and Industry. We are um, basically uh, supporting those uh, projects, but um, the uh, responsibility for the uh, uh, tenders themselves, for the process, for the scheduling, for the uh, uh, amounts, everything uh, lies uh, uh, within the, the uh, each and every uh, ministry or government agency 
that uh, publishes uh, uh, those tenders. So in this uh, plan, you will see tenders from uh, different uh, ministries. Uh, the uh, main ones and the biggest uh, projects are with the, uh, from the Ministry of Transportation and Road Safety. We have uh, uh, tenders of, and projects by Ministry of Energy, Ministry of Water Resources. Uh, Ministry of Finance is actually uh, responsible for running uh, different uh, infrastructure uh, projects, mainly uh, uh, PPP, but also other uh, uh, projects. Uh, so uh, a lot of the uh, construction tenders are run and managed not by the uh, uh, specific ministry, but rather by the uh, Ministry of Finance. We also have uh, tenders by the Ministry of Defense. And uh, as was mentioned before, I'm not talking about uh, defense related uh, tenders, but only about construction uh, uh, tenders uh, for the defense sector. And Amir mentioned uh, uh, before uh, the, uh, for example, the project for uh, removing uh, uh, the IDF's uh, bases from the center to the uh, south of Israel. Uh, we have uh, tenders uh, from the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Education. And we're basically talking about construction uh, and infrastructure uh, projects. So it's not, uh, we're not talking about the educational projects at the Ministry of Education, but rather about uh, building uh, schools, classrooms, etc. cetera. Um, so the tenders uh, and are coming uh, two uh, implementation methods. Uh, one which Amir expanded on is the, the PPP, and the other one is the uh, contractor tender. We're actually just uh, uh, bid and uh, win the, uh, the tender. If we look at, at the uh, main projects that uh, we see ahead, uh, the biggest projects are those uh, mainly related to the transportation sector uh, and more specifically even to the railway uh, sector. So we have uh, the Jerusalem Blue Line, which is about a $2.75 billion uh, project. We have uh, the light rail uh, a line of uh, Haifa to Nazareth, uh, which is uh, about one and a half billion dollars. And we have uh, two lines uh, uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, about five billion one, and the other one close to uh, three billion uh, US dollars. So we're talking about very, very uh, large projects. But as I mentioned, there are a lot of much, much smaller uh, projects uh, uh, dealing with a uh, conventional power station with uh, alternative energy uh, power generation uh, that could be uh, wind uh, turbines or photovoltaic uh, uh, electricity uh, uh, or uh, we have a fuel or gas pipeline and storage tenders. We have uh, water se sector tenders uh, in the area of uh, sewage, water, wastewater treatment, uh, desalination, etc. And we have quite a lot of uh, uh, different government construction uh, tenders. So you can go into the uh, link that uh, uh, was published uh, earlier in my presentation and uh, uh, see uh, in details each and every one of, uh, of those projects and who is responsible uh, for, for that uh, specific project. So a few words about the industrial cooperation. Um, Amir mentioned, mentioned before the government tender law. Uh, so uh, the industrial cooperation or the offset uh, buyback, everything, this is a, a law that is under the, uh, the government tender law. What it means basically is that every uh, government contract uh, exceeding 5 million US dollars in value uh, issued by any one of the uh, government agencies, meaning it could be ministry, it could be a government-owned uh, uh, company, could be, be municipalities, uh, etc. Uh, any one of those uh, projects that uh, a foreign supplier, foreign company, won this tender, that foreign supplier is uh, obligated to fulfill uh, buyback or offset uh, at a certain percentage of the value of that uh, uh, tender. Now, uh, this uh, divides into two. If the, uh, the company comes from a country which is uh, a member of the DPA, GPA is a government procurement agreement under the World Trade Organization, uh, they uh, 
are required to fulfill 20% uh, of uh, the uh, contract value in Israel. All of it should be what we call direct offset, meaning that uh, activity that is directly related to the project that uh, has been won. Uh, for example, if a, a company wins a tender to supply uh, railway uh, cars uh, to the Israel Railway uh, Corporation, then uh, if there is assembly of those uh, uh, cars, if there is a uh, uh, windows to the cars, seating to the cars, uh, and other activities related to those cars, this is all considered to be direct offset. Uh, and every company that uh, comes from a country that is not a member of the GPA, and India is not a member, uh, is required to fulfill 35% uh, of uh, civil procurements. 20% uh, of it, the first 20% should be direct offset, directly related to the project that they, they want. And in your case, that could be for even uh, cement engineering, uh, uh, local labor, et cetera, uh, related to the project. And the remaining 15% can be either direct or indirect. And indirect uh, can be actually anything as long as it's considered to be an Israeli uh, product or service. Uh, and I'm not going to go into details about uh, how we recognize Israeli uh, product, but basically it's 35% uh, uh, local content plus what we call substantial transformation uh, of that product. And all that fulfillment goes basically to the Israeli industry. So uh, uh, in India, we have uh, what only on uh, defense related uh, activities, we have uh, what's called uh, the uh, uh, Make in India, um, but in India, it's 100% uh, of the uh, value of the product has to be made uh, in India. In Israel, we have a uh, uh, lower percentage, but still uh, um, we would like it, uh, at least some of it to go into the, uh, the local Israeli industry. Now, uh, many companies start uh, to, to look at it as a, an obligation. Well, and uh, they say, well, if we have to uh, bid on this and we have to buy from uh, Israeli companies, uh, then, uh, you know, it's, it complicates the, uh, the bidding and everything. But what we say is uh, you can look at it uh, you can, as an obligation, but uh, we see it even more as an opportunity for the companies. And why is it an opportunity? We have uh, quite a flexible uh, approach with regards to, uh, to offset uh, and you can fulfill the, uh, uh, this obligation in a variety of ways. Uh, the very basic one of course is procurement, procurement of uh, um, uh, products or services related to the, to the project, but uh, we on also uh, allow and recognize cooperation in R&D in research and development, we recognize strategic investment in company, we recognize uh, activities such as vocational training, know-how transfer, and basically any other uh, cooperation that uh, we see as uh, promoting and supporting the Israeli local industries. And just as, a, and as an example, we enabled uh, one company in actually in a defense related uh, uh, tender uh, to fulfill their obligation or part of the obligation through an Israeli company that uh, uh, develops and, and uh, builds uh, wastewater treatment uh, facility in a, in a facility of uh, a sister company of that company in, uh, in Europe. So uh, we're quite flexible. Anything that uh, uh, you may think about as, a, as potential cooperation, we are very much open uh, to, uh, to discuss that. Now, um, Sagi mentioned uh, earlier, our economic representative in Mumbai mentioned earlier, uh, Israel is a very advanced technological country. Uh, and we are very much promoting and supporting and encouraging uh, the companies uh, to be involved more with the Israeli uh, uh, technology ecosystem here. Um, Sagi mentioned uh, an event that will take place uh, next month. Uh, and this is the, uh, the sector that he mentioned, the uh, construction technology and property technology sector. 
Now, we at the Ministry of uh, Economy and Industry are supporting uh, several, uh, what we call communities of uh, companies. One of the uh, communities that we support is the contact. Contact uh, relates to construction tech and uh, property tech uh, companies. And this is a very, very uh, developing uh, sector in Israel. Uh, I had a discussion with the uh, uh, managing director of this uh, community last week, uh, and they said that uh, uh, if about uh, three years ago there were about 30 companies in this community, now they are exceeding 180 different companies. And you can see the, uh, uh, the areas of uh, activities that they have from advanced materials and building methods to infrastructure technologies, on-site uh, execution, inspection and monitoring, safety, product management and collaboration platforms, planning and design, et cetera, and also in the property uh, 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 technology area, real estate marketing solutions, uh, location-based services, finance, investment platforms, smart home, uh, insurance, et cetera. Uh, so there are a lot, a lot of uh, technologies in Israel that even if you are uh, uh, not considering to bid on uh, tenders in Israel, I do encourage you uh, to look into that. Uh, we have a lot of activities uh, uh, such as the one that uh, Saki mentioned earlier. Uh, and of course, we can connect you directly to the different technology companies in this sector and in many other uh, areas. So uh, this was uh, my very, very brief uh, presentation here. Uh, I hope it gave you a little bit of an overview of the uh, uh, activities and the projects and the opportunities that we have in Israel in the government uh, infrastructure uh, tenders area. And uh, we really look forward to uh, see you here in Israel. We look forward to see more uh, Indian companies uh, active and bidding and winning public tenders uh, in Israel. And we will be very, very happy to, uh, to work with you uh, on uh, the implementation project uh, program of of, uh, of these uh, projects, and also on introducing you to the different uh, opportunities regarding uh, technology and other types of cooperation in Israel. So uh, thank you very much, and I'll uh, give back the uh, floor uh, to you guys. Uh, thank you, Hova. Uh, it was great to have you. I mean, even I was surprised at the kind of opportunities that are available in Israel today. And uh, it's across sectors, you know, in being in India, we get to hear only about India and Israel defense cooperation. But uh, it's so surprising and water, of course. But uh, today, what you've highlighted, you have come to know that the sector is immense and, you know, it is across the board. And there's such a huge amount of opportunities that are available today. Uh, that we can take up. Thank you so much for this uh, enlightening information shared by you. Uh, meanwhile, I would now like to ask if any of you all have any questions for any of the speakers. Uh, Darshan, would you like to add something onto uh, uh, this before, uh, before you open up for the question and answer? Yeah. So basically, the, the, the entire presentation and then the entire seminar was to highlight the, you know, what are the opportunities available in Israel. And along with that, you know, providing certain insights about how to even structure the Indian infrastructure business outside India. And uh, all the speakers, Amir, Ofer, Hoar, and they've specifically covered that topic and provided detailed insights on how to, uh, how to invest in Israel, what are the opportunities available in Israel. And I think so they have covered uh, exhaustively the uh, various aspects uh, from the Israel infrastructure perspective and what we have tried is Kanudoshi Associates to cover most from the regulatory index perspective. So uh, uh, Manpreet, I think the most interesting part what Hoa uh, just uh, mentioned was the flexibility of uh, uh, of the local component. Uh, that that is available, which is unlike uh, at least what we hear, uh, and especially in India. And immediately, a few of the corporates came to mind. Right now, we are in a transaction where we are getting know-how from Israel 
in a different technology and same group company is looking to sell some building materials construction uh, materials to israel and there there is a synergy between a large business house between different businesses and that's that makes it very dynamic for corporates even large corporates with multiple business interests to look at opportunities so very very interesting uh how it was an eye opener for us uh, at least to understand that and then what offer mentioned at the start the practical aspects of uh, how do we go about it we need a local partner to understand and evaluate opportunities then we need someone to prepare this entire bid and then carry it and handle this entire process and they beautifully mentioned of different aspects and stages of that uh, of the entire process i think the easy part what we do is how do we bring back the profit but i think more businesses would be interested in how effectively and efficiently how we bring back the profit back to india so that can be allocated to different other opportunities in india i think we would be very interested to ha- uh, have some questions uh, which are very specific to infrastructure sector So that this panel can enlighten our guests. So, Manthi, do you think there are any questions this this esteemed panel can answer? Uh, I think uh, let's try and take a risk and unmute everybody. And but I request everybody to please raise your hands. There's an option at the bottom. Uh, please raise your hands and ask your questions. Uh, let's please uh, maintain decorum. We are here to answer all your questions. We have an amazing panel today. So just give me a minute okay so uh, everybody can unmute themselves uh, so please unmute yourself ask a question mute yourself back again so you all have permission to unmute yourself but please one at a time uh, i see the hand of shubhangi tirodkar ji shubhangi madam uh, please uh, yeah. go ahead thank you manpreet uh it was really a great session i am into uh, this activity for more past more than 37 years into construction activity uh let me first uh, welcome and uh, give my thanks to the our israel counterpart thank you very much for association my question is like i deal into um special construction products and uh, special chemicals is there any scope for uh, a supply and whether some technology also we have so can the exchange of technology be done thank you very much thank you shubhangi ji uh, this question is directed to anybody in particular or anybody can answer uh, no mitesh ji also could answer uh, because he i think he is more expert in that and how to get connected also then for right uh thank you shubham shubhangi ji for your question it's very interesting question and uh giving technology to israel uh, israeli counterparts it would be very interesting uh, uh, our israeli partners they are they have a long history ofer uh, and amir in israel and they would know most of the businesses there and who would be interested so you can direct your queries to them or to us with specific details and we can try to support you in this uh, efforts to so identify partners in those geographies uh, for specific for projects or tender projects i think amir uh, 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 is there an opportunity to be just uh, identify supply opportunities in this uh, construction projects i think you can uh, you are an expert in that whether this also can be explored apart from typical construction uh, what are the supply kind of opportunities which indian businesses can explore in large projects amit uh, amit you are a, your voice is not audible i have problem with the net with the internet well, okay now we are you are audible yes yeah offer you can answer maybe if, if, maybe i'll, I'll uh, until i will organize the connection 
Um, generally, I think that we can answer that in two parts. First of all, uh, in infrastructure projects, naturally, and also out of infrastructure projects, uh, like uh, life science, technology, and such, it's quite common uh, that we are representing foreign companies coming to do some kind of joint venture in two levels. Uh, if I'm related to infrastructure, infrastructure projects, you can see that there is, uh, I'm assuming more than 70% of the companies that are winning tenders or going to the private market are joint venture, meaning taking, sharing knowledge, sharing technology, sharing experience. Even sometimes it's, it's uh, making your situation with a government tender even better because if you are bringing, let's say, knowledge and experience from India and you find here a, a partner for a JV in Israel, so your accumulate uh, experience and uh, knowledge is ranked higher in, 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 the, in the tender. So it's quite common to share uh, knowledge and information. This is for the infrastructure project. If you want to have a wider picture, it's quite common also to have joint venture and sharing of knowledge in life science and technology, high-tech uh, uh, fields, uh, also pharma. Uh, even in the last uh, months, we are seeing uh, all kinds of uh, joint venture regarding uh, healthcare uh, related to COVID-19 with Indian companies and uh, Israeli companies. So it, it, if I'm hoping that I'm answering correctly or exactly to your question, but yes, sharing, sharing knowledge and information is, is uh, essential part of, of the dealing between the countries. Uh, Shubhangij, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, and, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ophir, and uh, thank you, Mitesh. Uh, we now also have uh, our very own Dr. Jitendra Joshiji. Uh, Joshiji, welcome. Uh, Joshiji is also the president of the Global India Business Forum, who are our partners. Please go ahead, uh, sir. Hello, good evening. Uh, thank you, Manpreetji. Uh, my question is not uh, related to any uh, forum today. Uh, so, as a businessman, we are into very big way in the logistics and supply chain activity at globally and all India level. So, how can we do more types with the Israeli companies in India to support them? As we already have some uh, Israel groups we are uh, uh, serving in India right now. Uh, so, my specific question to uh, Mr. Amir. Uh, how can we go ahead and uh, do more uh, cooperative efforts between Israeli companies and uh, our group where we are supplying so many logistics activity in India at all, all, at all India level? Thank you very much for this question. Well, as we say, step by step uh, and, and do it correctly. Um, what I would like to share with you is as follow. I hope that you hear me well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it is good to know that you have such a business offering to Israeli company. What we are doing, our systematic process, is to understand more deeply what is your advantage, what is your offering, and, uh, and what is your business proposal. Then we take it, and through our channel, we publish it into the Israeli market in order to find out and to connect the partners, the good partners, for your own benefits. Now, I cannot assure you that everybody will um, uh, uh, that everybody will take your offer, but I can assure you that with a good working methodology, uh, you increasing your chances to collaborate with more Israeli company. And the reason is you need to be pres present in the Israeli market to making a marketing activity. And with our connection, we can do it. Thank you so much. Uh, I think all the speakers have shared their uh, contact details uh, in the chat box. So uh, please feel free to contact them. And if any case you have any problems, uh, our office at Indian Chamber of International Business is available for you. You can send us an email and we can connect you with the right partners. Thank you. Joshi, thank you so much. Uh, Mitesh, over to you. Mitesh? Mantra, Mitesh has a connectivity issue. Okay, okay, no problem. 
So uh, Darshan, would you like to take over and then uh, we would move on to uh, the best but not for last kind of event uh, with the vote of thanks. Yeah, definitely. So I think so. It's a great session. I think so. Again, I'm th I would like to thank ICIB for providing the platform and all the speakers to taking out the time and you know providing their hands-on experience on each and every aspect of the topic whichever they have covered. And special special thanks to OF Ref and uh, it, the consulate member for you know participating in the event and uh, you also the, all the participants who have come to uh, and join this event and you know uh have provided their questions also i think so we look forward to uh, uh, any further questions in this regard and anything specifically you can definitely mention to write to us over the email and we can take it separately yeah uh, i think uh, uh manpreet will share the contact details of each participant to all the guests so that they can reach out to them. Yes, yes, we'll be doing that post event. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to have you all here today with us. And I would really like to thank all our speakers, attendees, uh, partners for taking the time out today to be with us and listen to this uh, very specialized uh, segment on the infrastructure sector. Not only infrastructure, but when it comes to Israel, uh, our team here is very well qualified to take care of any of the sectors. And if any of y'all, any of the speakers or any of the guests have any uh, requirements to connect to Israeli companies or to the Indian companies, please feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to connect you to the right partners. Once again, I would like to thank uh, the Ministry of Economy and Industry of Israel, the Consulate General of Israel in Mumbai, uh, Kanudoshi Group, Orin, Antia, Global India Business Forum, and also Construct Maharashtra, which is part of the NESCO exhibitions. Thank you so much to all of y'all. A uh, special thank you to all our speakers, uh, Mr. Sagi Isher, the Economic and Trade Council, uh, 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 Mr. Hova of Ref, uh, the Senior Director and uh, Business Development Officer for the Ministry of Economy uh, and, uh, in Israel. A uh, big thank you to Amir Kahani, uh, International Business Consultant, Mr. Ophi Rangel, Chairman of Orin Israel, the Kanudoshi Group Partners, uh, Darshan Shah and Mitesh Gala. Thank you so much, all of you. It was a pleasure to have all of you all with us here today. And thank you thank very you. much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Organization, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye Have bye. a great day, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 bye.